where we left off in the last video, Toussaint Louverture had just been betrayed by, well, on some level, first by some of his right-hand men, because they joined the side of Leclerc, or they essentially they gave up rebelling against Leclerc, convinced that Leclerc wasn't that bad, that he had no intention of reinstating slavery or taking the, away the civil rights of the free men of African descent. This is another picture of Leclerc right here. This is Leclerc. So he had to essentially give up his arms. He went to negotiate with Leclerc. Leclerc. Leclerc imprisoned him, put him on a boat, and sent him to France. And he died the next year in 1803. So he was betrayed. He was betrayed and died in prison in 1803. And he really was, on a lot of levels, one of the most important leaders, uh, not just in Haitian history, but in general. When he took power, as I said before, he didn't take revenge on the white population. He helped the economy of Haiti get back and run, get back up and running. He actually helped defend what what is now Haiti, but Saint Domingue, against the British Royal Navy. And I, I forgot to mention that in the defended against the British against the British Navy, which at the time was the by far the dominant navy in the world. So this is what really earned his reputation as a great general on top of being a, a, a great leader in terms of not exacting revenge, in terms of not having slash and burn tactics, in terms of not just you know ravaging his enemies. So he was betrayed. And then just to make it clear that Leclerc really does deserve devil horns of a sort, although we're about to meet someone who deserves much bigger devil horns, or maybe that he was actually the henchman for someone who de deserves devil horns. In May of 1802, May of 1802, Napoleon signs into law that uh, signs a law that says that that reinstates slavery where it has not disappeared. Slavery where not were not gone. And so it was a little bit ambiguous. There were some areas where slavery had still not disappeared. Those include the French colonies at at Martinique, at Saint Lucia, at Tobago. But Haiti, things were, or Saint Domingue at that time, things were a little ambiguous. Had had slavery truly disappeared, or had it not disappeared yet? Uh, apparently, slaves were free in Haiti, so it wasn't clear exactly what this meant for Haiti. But at the same time, the Haitians didn't even know this was happening. This was May of 1802. But just to make things clear, Napoleon actually sent Leclerc a secret memo. To essentially reinstate slavery when the time was right, reinstate slavery, reinstate slavery when right. So these guys, I mean, they were they were no jokers. They knew the situation. They knew that they needed the help of some of uh, Toussaint Louverture's former uh, generals, former right-hand men, in order to keep control of Haiti. But the intention the entire time was, when they have the upper hand, to actually clamp down, reinstate slavery, and take away the civil rights of the free men of color. Now, these guys weren't stupid either. So you remember, you might remember Dessalines. This was one picture of him. He was also a former slave, one of Toussaint Louverture's right-hand men, very effective general. And as you remember, near the end of the fight against Leclerc, he gave up the fight against Leclerc. And to some degree, you could say he turned on Toussaint Louverture. But he and some of the other uh, uh, former followers of Louverture saw the writing on the wall. They didn't even have to intercept that secret memo. They got word from Martinique and Tobago and St. Lucia. They got word that slavery was being re being reinstated, that the, the French at this time were not people that you wanted to deal with or trust when it came to issues to issue of slavery. So Dissaline and his comrades retook up arms. They took up 
arms. And Dessalines was a very different character than Toussaint Louverture. They were the, the, the one similarity is that they were both very effective military men. The big difference uh, between the two was that Dessalines was not one to hold back. Didn't hold back. He wasn't afraid to uh, essentially uh, uh, take an eye for an eye, so to speak. So here you had Dessalines in charge of what was, I guess you could call, the slave rebel army. And then on the other side of it, you have Leclerc with the 40 thousand troops that he came that he showed up with Napoleon but lucky for Dessalines lucky for Dessalines yellow fever and it's not lucky i mean people died across the, the board but this did really turn the tide of war in favor of the 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 uh, people of african descent on the island yellow fever yellow fever struck the island it killed Leclerc, and it also took out 20 something thousand, and the number I read was 24,000 of the actual French soldiers, and another 8,000 were hospitalized. So that's 32,000 out, out of commission, so you're essentially only left with 8,000 soldiers. So all of a sudden, it completely turned the tide, completely changed the numbers in terms of uh, uh, what types of uh, forces the, the rebel army had to fight against against but it wasn't all i guess good at this point because leclerc i mentioned i gave him little devil horns he was replaced by someone who deserves very big very big devil horns named rochambeau rochambeau and not to be confused with his father who goes by the same name who was a hero of the American Revolution. He fought for France on the side of the Americans. Uh, but his son, uh, and, and he, as far as I can, I can tell, seemed like a decent guy. But his son was really evil. And there are very few people in history that you can say uh, are unambiguously evil. He is one of them. N now that he was kind of desperate, he had, uh, you know, his, his, his forces were ravaged by yellow fever. He's going against a fairly aggressive enemy. He did things like he would bury, let me write these down, because they are evil. He would bury uh, 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 African American, or I guess I should say African Americans. He would uh, bury uh, former slaves or people of African descent, bury in, bury alive, bury alive in pits of insects. In insects, he would boil people alive in molasses. Boil people alive in molasses. I read one account that says that at one point he held a ball where he invited all of the prominent mixed race uh, 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 people to a uh, party, essentially at his place. And at the stroke of midnight, he announced that all of the men are to be murdered. Uh, so this guy, I mean, you know, if uh, cruelty, he definitely, you know, his the only bounds on his cruelty was, you know, the people that he could uh, get his hands on, especially the people of African descent. The one positive of his cruelty is that he, for the first time, really unified the 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 population of African descent on the island. So he unified. He unified both the slaves the former slaves and the mixed race people of mixed and the people of mixed race and at the same time we're now in 1803 we're now in 1803 and i've i've said it before we're still at war with britain war with britain and britain is, and I mentioned it before, they had the most dominant navy in the world. Dominant navy. Dominant, dominant navy. This guy, despite how evil and how cruel he was, he needed reinforcements from Napoleon if he had to take on Dessalines. And you know, let, let me be very clear to, uh, about this. Dessalines, as I mentioned, he was not hesitant to take an eye for an eye. In one incident, Rochambeau buried 500 rebel prisoners alive. Then Dessalines went 
and hung 500 French prisoners. So he wasn't someone to kind of shy away from, uh, uh, from, from I guess, blood. And this is very different to Toussaint Louverture. It's kind of a lesson when if you are fighting an enemy, if you get rid of the more reasonable leaders of your enemy, if you get rid of the more reasonable leaders of your enemy, you might end up getting a maybe a, a leader more similar to yourself in your cruelty if 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 you are if you betray if you betray the more reasonable ones but anyway enough of my commentary so the stage is set the war with britain britain owns the seas especially the caribbean this guy needs reinforcements going against a very a very strong uh, uh, leader of the of the former slave rebels but napoleon you know, he's known to be one to cut his losses. He did it with his troops in Egypt. He's really not someone who really cares, I think, about the individual, cares much more about uh, his ego and his power. So Napoleon leaves him hanging. Napoleon leaves hanging. Napoleon saw the writing of the wall. He wouldn't be able to get through the British fleet. And at the same time, Napoleon's fighting all of these wars in Europe. As you remember, the, the whole French Revolution was pre precipitated by France being broke. So Napoleon, not only does he give up on this guy, and he essentially got what he deserved, Napoleon gives up on maintaining all of their colonies or any major presence in the Western Hemisphere. So essentially, to raise funds, Napoleon also sells Louisiana to the Americans. And when I say Louisiana, I'm not talking about just the state of Louisiana in its present state, which is about that big. That's actually where I was born. We're talking about the whole, this is like one third of the United States today. Sold all of this. All of this. And he was clearly desperate. He sold it for, he sold it for $15 million, or that's the equivalent of 60 million francs. 60 million francs, and I've been told in today's money that would be on the order of $10 billion. So this is still a very small, you know, if someone said for $10 billion you could own one third of the land of the United States, you would say that's a pretty good deal. $10 billion in today's money. So, you know, 15 million in, in 1803, 10 billion today, that's still not a lot of money, but he was desperate. He realized that he couldn't maintain control of something halfway around the world when Britain owned the seas and he was busy fighting his own, having his own troubles in Europe. So the, the, the Americans got a good deal. And frankly, if he didn't sell it to the Americans, either the British or the Americans could have probably just taken it anyway. So being left to hang to dry by Napoleon, Dessalines is able to destroy, is able to destroy Rochambeau, and essentially declare independence for for uh, 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 Saint Domingue. And in 1804, January 1, January 1, 1804, Dessalines declares independence. Four, and he names the new country Haiti, which is the indigenous people's name for the island. It means land of the mountains. Now, I want to I want to just uh, leave with one note because you might may or may not be aware Haiti is still a very 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 poor country. And and besides, you know, after Dessalines, they had many 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 and eventually I'll do videos on it, rounds of one dictator after another and the people have really been through a lot. But I just want to make it clear that they really got started off on a horrible foot because even though Dessalines declared independence in 1804, the French did not recognize Haiti until 1805. So uh, sorry, 1825. French recognize. And the only reason why they recognize, and you might say, well, who, who cares about recognition? You know, what was the, who, who cares what the former colonial masters think? But until they recognized it, they were essentially embargoing Haiti. They weren't allowing any trade to actually go on with Haiti. So it was really on the, on the, on the front of a barrel of a gun. And in order to be recognized, in order to be recognized, Haiti had to agree to 90 million, 90 million francs 90 million francs of debt to France, of debt to France. And just to be clear of how much money this is, here's a small island. Here's a small island of newly freed, or half of an island, 
of newly freed slaves, and they were forced to owe France. They were forced to owe France, and this actually was further uh, reinforced by uh, the United States and Great Britain. So it shows to show you even former enemies can uh, kind of agree when it comes to oppressing uh, a small impoverished islands. But they had to owe France the equivalent of one and a half times, one and a half times what the United States paid for the Louisiana Purchase. They had to pay, this was 60 million francs. They got all of Louisiana. Now France is telling Haiti, you owe us 90 million francs. Or that's roughly the equivalent of uh, 14 or 15 billion dollars in today's terms. And this is for a population of essentially half a million freed slaves. So it's kind of a horrendous amount of debt. And just to be clear, this isn't something, you know, this wasn't like the crazy colonials in the, you know, early early 19th century forcing to do this. This debt was not paid off with the interest not paid off until 19 47 they were continuing to pay the debt and just to and just to add insult to injury the 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 reason for the debt they claim it was for lost property so that's why france claimed that haiti owed them the money for lost property lost property where included in the list of lost property was land and slaves essentially uh, now that you've got your freedom, you owe us a ton of money for uh, essentially us losing the rights to own you. So it's just insult to injury. And actually, I was shocked the first time I learned this number, that they were forced to continue to pay debts from one poor country, one small poor country, right over here. They, they had to continue to pay debts to a Western developed nation until 1947, essentially to buy their freedom. 